Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Sarah and on this channel we talk about all things music and especially ways to make your classroom more meaningful, joyful, to help your students feel successful in music and to meet them where they are knowing that you can always dive deeper based on their natural inclinations. So today I really just I want to spend like three minutes talking about a, um, a topic that um, has really been weighing on my mind um, that isn't like serious but but perhaps in a way it is <laughs> so let me let me set the stage um like two months ago or so I went to see um I went to see a musical with a bunch of family and friends in Hartford and one of the questions that we we were having like a conversation in the car we all like caravaned and carpooled and one of the questions that one of my family members brought up was like are you you know um are you teaching your students songs like you are my sunshine or this little light of mine or um America the beautiful you know I guess you could call them like traditional songs that that somehow I know like I don't I don't know where I learned all of those necessarily I mean some in school but others like in church and um but some you know not all kids go to church anymore or like CCD or even library groups and in school uh depending on your curriculum depending on whether or not you even have one or if you have uh scheduling constraints like if you have 35 minutes a week with students you know figuring out what to prioritize is in itself, um, you know, that takes up a lot of mental space. But the quest that like the, the overarching question there, besides you teaching your students this and this is um, how, how do we pass on traditional music? Um, and I'm just, I'm coming from an American perspective here. How do we pass on traditional American music, songs, folk songs, ballads to our children? And whose responsibility is that? And what does it mean to not teach those? Are we okay with the, the consequences of not um, of not having our students know how to sing "America the Beautiful"? Or and I'm, I'm just I'm gravitating towards patriotic songs right now because I have to prepare my students for Flag Day, and I'm choosing some traditional pieces because I do want students to leave elementary school knowing how to sing the first few verse of "America the Beautiful," but at the same time, I'm thinking why? And well, why not? Right. But why? And it's the same question I ask myself when I have to pick composers for us to study. And I had a student call me out and say, why are we learning about, I think it was Handel or maybe Haydn. Why are we learning about this person? I will not need to know this as an adult. And I don't know what you need to know as an adult. You know, no one knows in fourth grade, almost no one knows what they want to do as an adult or third grade, whatever grade. But whose responsibility is it to teach not not even like not even songs like this little light of mine or you are my sunshine songs like like let's go back to like Gershwin songs because like I know Gershwin songs from watching like Mickey Rooney and Judy Garland movies and from being in musical theater but why is it important for a student to know how to sing like I got rhythm <laughs> or which I've never taught but like that just popped in my head. I have just all these questions in my head about whose responsibility it is to be teaching this music and why we would want to teach certain songs because you can't teach everything. And one person's idea of a classic is another person's like, I've never heard that before, or, Hey, this song has a problematic history and we're actually going to like not touch that anymore. Um, which is an, another conversation. I'm really talking more about songs getting lost through history because they're not passed down orally or they're not a part of a family's culture. And the way I grew up with a lot of, of just a wide variety of music from classical to Broadway to movie soundtracks. I know a lot about music based on how, you know, from my upbringing, but also from my degree programs. And are we okay with letting America the Beautiful or um, You're a Grand Old Flag get lost? Are we okay moving on? Because music keeps going. People are writing new songs and in a hundred years, what you know what will students be learning and will it still be relevant and i have all these ands right so i'm gonna stop there because uh i would love to i would love to continue this conversation in the comments or in like an instagram conversation or if you have any thoughts you can also email me um i do have an email list that i um send a weekly like e-blast to about music ed uh, but it's especially geared towards teachers coming from a non-traditional background like me. I went back and got certified after my master's degree in classical music composition. So again, that's something that really influences and really informs my thinking on this. But um, if you want to reach out to me on email, if you want to join the list, I'll leave the link below. I'm super curious as to what, if anyone else has this, these thoughts and whether like how, how you are navigating 
being a music teacher, when, you know, when there's so much that students can explore, but you still want to honor the past and make sure that students are getting a well-rounded experience in the classroom. Just wondering. <laughs> Let's have a talk. Let's have a talk. Leave some comments below. We'll have a talk. <laughs> Happy music making.